I know Gen Y because I target them as the core audience of my startup if we ran the world. I work with them as the predominant part of my startup team. I'm friends with them, and I also date them. <laughs> I date younger men, predominantly men in their 20s. When I date younger men, I have sex with younger men. And when I have sex with younger men, I encounter very directly and personally the real ramifications of the creeping ubiquity of hardcore pornography in our culture. So in an era where hardcore porn is more freely and widely available via the internet than ever before, and where kids are therefore accessing it at an earlier and earlier age than ever before, there is now an entire generation growing up that believes that what you see in hardcore porn is the way that you have sex. And this is exacerbated by the fact that we live in a culture of puritanism and double standards, where people believe that a teen abstinence campaign will actually work, where parents are too embarrassed to talk to their children about sex, and where schools and colleges are vilified if they try and make up the educational gap. And so hardcore porn has become, by default, the sex education of today. Now, as a confident, mature, experienced older woman, when I encounter this personally, I have no problem accepting that a certain amount of re-education, rehabilitation, and reorientation needs to take place. <laughs> so, I personally have no problem whatsoever saying, as I've had to on a number of occasions, actually, no, thank you very much. I'd much rather not, in fact, come on my face. <laughs> my concern is not for me. It's for the young guy who believes, because hardcore porn has taught him that all women love having men come on their faces. And it's particularly for the young girl whose boyfriend wants to come on her face. She does not want him to come on her face. But hardcore porn has taught her that all men love coming on women's faces, all women love having their faces come on, therefore she must let him come on her face and she must pretend to like it. <laughs> so, I launched a year ago at TED a website called makelovenotporn.com. Can we bring that up, actually? What this website does is it posts the myths of hardcore porn and it balances them with the reality. Whoops. So the construct is porn world, real world, as you can see. Um, I'm not going to linger too much on this because I'm going to ask you to look at it at your leisure. But um, I would say two very important things about this site. The first is that this is in no way whatsoever about judgment. This is not about this is good or this is bad, because sex is the area of human experience and embraces the widest possible range of proclivities. And secondly, importantly, make love not porn is not anti-porn. I'm a big fan of hardcore porn. I watch it regularly myself. Although my overriding selection criteria these days has to be, can I find something that doesn't overly resemble open heart surgery? But hardcore porn as an industry is predominantly driven by men, funded by men, managed by men, directed by men, and targeted at men. So hardcore porn tends to have one world view. Hardcore porn goes, this is the way sex is, and I just want to go, not necessarily. I put this site up on no money because I felt strongly about it and I want to do something about it. The response since I launched it has been extraordinary. I get emails on a daily basis from young, old, male, female, all around the world. This is a global issue and Make Love Not Porn is a global concept. My mailbag ranges from enormously heartfelt and appreciative through very moving through to, in a couple of instances, utterly horrific in terms of people's experiences. And I'd urge you to go to the About page on the site and take a look at the extracts of some of those emails. I talk at conferences all the time where people speak about the impact of technology on human behavior. I am talking about the single biggest impact that technology has had and is currently having on the most fundamental aspect of human behavior, our sexuality. The area that informs every single aspect of how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about other people, how we relate to other people, our actual happiness. And by the way, anybody in the audience who styles themselves a social media expert, you don't know social media till you've studied the social media exchange that goes on around porn sites. You don't know social media until you've studied the extraordinary community building and social media interaction that goes on around what people like to do in bed. Porn has and always will be at the cutting edge of everything to do with technology. The day the iPad launched, there was porn for the iPad. Moot of 4chan says, the third law of 4chan is, if it exists, there is porn of it. No exceptions. 
he's absolutely right. I follow a bunch of porn stars on Twitter. They're very active on Twitter, and they provide, by the way, the most riveting blend of endearing domesticity and normalized outrageousness. I recommend it as an exercise on Twitter. The average age at which kids first view porn today is 11. Mashable posted last December the results of a survey that showed that the fourth most searched for search term amongst seven-year-olds today is porn, after Facebook, YouTube, and Google. My friend Justin took a subway ride last December next to two 11-year-old boys who were laughing and joking about, quote, the funny things that guys do to girls on gagonmycock.com. I am talking about a massive, massive issue that the vast majority of people have no idea about, don't want to face up to, and are doing absolutely nothing about. You're here today to talk about and study Generation Y. If you want to know what Gen Y is really doing, go to one of my favorite websites of all time, textfromlastnight.com. Who, who's aware of Text From Last Night? Excellent. I recommend that site to everybody. Its slogan is, remember that drunken text you sent last night? We do. And I recommend it for three reasons. A, it's screamingly hysterically funny. B, it's modern poetry. It is SMS's art form. And C, at a much more serious level, it is an absolutely riveting socio-cultural snapshot of the social, cultural, sexual, mores, behavior, attitudes of our times. You can extrapolate every possible theme of human behavior from textandlastnight.com. The pornification of culture, the way men talk about women, the way women talk about men, plan B is contraception. Because of course, in a large part of this country, if a woman is carrying around condoms, she's a slut. But to get carried away by passion, that's totally fine, but then you have to do something about it, plan B. So, Seriously, take a look at textfromlastnight.com if you want to see what your audience, what Gen Y, is really doing. I tend to say that, um, ironically, um, my two ventures, If We Ran the World and Make Love Not Porn, have a lot in common. For a start, with both of them, I'm tackling very big, very complicated issues that many, many people and many organizations and institutions are also trying to tackle. But I'm doing it in the way that I am best suited to, with my background in brand building, marketing, and advertising. I'm tackling them by embedding them in popular culture in a way that makes them entertaining, engaging, and compelling, so that the educational impact is not what is immediately seen or felt, because that is absolute death if you want something to be as pervasive as the influence of hardcore porn. And the issue is absolutely not porn. The issue is a counterpoint to porn, providing an open, healthy discussion and debate about sex, porn, and sexuality in our society, and what constitutes real-world sex and real-world sexual relationships that you can then bring as a mindset when you watch porn, which will always be there. A recent study said the biological chemistry of human sexual behavior has outlived all attempts to censor and suppress it and always will. Make no mistake, parents, your kids are going to watch hardcore porn no matter what blocks you put on their home computers. They will find it somewhere. That's not the issue. The issue is absolutely balancing out that impact. So I tend to say that um, in their own separate ways, both my ventures are about helping to achieve world peace. If we ran the world, is about trying to help achieve world peace by helping to change the world one micro action at a time. And Make Love Not Porn is about helping to achieve world peace because I believe that if more people were having more sex and more better sex that was genuinely enjoyable and fulfilling, the world would be a much happier place and we would be much further along the path to achieving world peace. More blowjobs, less world wars. <laughs> I am absolutely serious. You can change the world through sex and human sexuality. I would urge you all, when you leave today, be aware of this incredibly important aspect of Generation Y's attitudes, behaviors, the way they're living their lives today. Please let that inform the work that you do when you target, speak to, interact with, or work with Gen Y. And by the way, if anybody is interested in partnering with me to help with the work that I'm doing, then I would enormously welcome that. Thank you very much. Thank you.